That music always makes me want to punch someone, but in a really happy way. Um, I watched a bunch of the TED Talks last night to try and see exactly how this is supposed to go. And most of the speakers kind of, um, they always start off with a joke. Um, I haven't written one, so that's your loss. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about today is the rise of what I call ambiguous micro stories and also how our stories are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And we're moving from a place of it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, to a place of the times were okay. Um, and the reason for this is we have a generation which is reaching adulthood now that has essentially grown up consuming their environment in decreasingly smaller and smaller chunks from their uh, news and their media uh, and now storytelling as well. Before I carry on with that, I'd like to talk about someone that's incredibly important to me um, and that person is you because you are the main character in a project um, I've been busy with now for the past four years called I Wrote This For You, which is essentially a combination of photography and very, very short stories that I create with a friend of mine in Japan named John Ellis. We've been friends for about six years and have never met, um, which people are interested in for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but essentially, we create these very, very, very short stories. And one of the very important things we do with these stories is we leave out a lot of detail. And there's a reason for this. Um, by leaving out things like gender, age, race, location, people apply the stories to themselves. So I'd never write a story this short, although it's been close before. Um, but essentially, by leaving out the details, people apply those stories to themselves. There's no story I can tell you that is as powerful as the story you can tell yourself. Since the blog's inception, it, it takes the form of a blog, it's reached hundreds of thousands of people, it's been read millions of times, it gets, the address gets written on Bibles in Alabama, um, I have friends in Singapore, Canada, uh, it won Best Photographic Blog at the National Blog Awards earlier here in Cape Town. It is the most nominated blog to win Best Blog at the International 2009 Web Blog Awards. <laughs> I'm a finalist for Best Blogger to follow at the International Open Web Awards, which is awesome. And I have thousands of people who tell me it's a big deal every day. Which brings me to the title of my talk, You and I, We Are the Same. I think some people don't like that idea that we are not the beautiful and unique snowflakes we are told we are. But I find a sense of comfort that we all share similar emotions. And as a storyteller, I like to play on the two opposite ends of emotion, which are happiness and joy and sadness and missing. And like a traditional storyteller, but a traditional storyteller has the luxury of an entire book or an entire movie to get to the point of a story. And the point of a story is more often than not a single sentence. I try and write that sentence five days of the week now for four years. This is how long Fight Club is on the internet. This is your life and it's ending one minute at a time. That's the point of that story. I also believe that a story should be accessible from any point at which you interact with it, which is why the URL is please find this dot blogspot. Please find this when you hear about it, you go, okay, well, I should probably find that. It's asked me very politely. The name of the project itself, I wrote this for you, implies that there's something special waiting for you. The first thing people read when they get there is, I need you to understand something. I wrote this for you. I wrote this for you and only you. Everyone else who reads it doesn't get it. They may think they get it, but they don't. This is the design you've been looking for. You are meant to read these words. And what they see is something like this. This one's called the translation service. And when I asked you how you'd been, I meant I missed you more than I've ever missed anything before or the big blue sea. I don't care how many fish there are in the sea. I don't want a fish. I want you. And some people don't get this. And I think some people, well, those people haven't grown up in this digital space where identity is entirely optional. So if you can be anyone, you is essentially everyone. So it's amazing. We're in this community that consists of millions of people that are millions of miles apart. But at no point in human history have we been closer to each other. Uh, this is some work by a guy called Frank Warren who started the Post Secret Project. He was kind enough to give me permission to show some of his slides, or his work at least. Um, essentially, people send him anonymous confessions on postcards. This one reads, I have a necklace I bought at the place I cheated on my husband. I worry when he tells me I'm fat, ugly, and stupid to remind me that someone once thought I was beautiful. I hate my coworkers, as we all do. <laughs> 
In Frank's own words, since a 4 by 6 inch card is not big enough to hold a complete story, writers must use just a handful of words and images to share a tale they might have kept concealed for decades. This forces the correspondent to include only the most crucial elements. The reader is then free to fill in the details, drawing upon their own experiences, values, and imagination to better understand the human story on each card. Other people who are kind of pioneering this new form of micro story um, are Joey and Emily from A Softer World. They've also kindly given me permission to show some of their work. This one reads, it isn't easy to stage a convincing alien abduction, but if it were easy, would I really be father of the year? So they don't ever have any characters. They don't have a Garfield or a Superman or a Batman. And what happens is people read these stories and they make up the story themselves, or they find a story inside it. This is the work of a friend of mine in New Hampshire, an artist called Cassandra Warren. This one reads, and then you will speak in the dark. I'd also like to just talk about how, besides, talking about, uh, besides the community of people that I speak to every day, how I've managed to interact with communities around the world, um, a man called Matthew E. May, who has written a book called In Pursuit of Elegance, um, amongst other things, uh, loves my blog because he loves the fact that I leave out information to make it what he calls more elegant. Introduced me to a woman called Stephanie Allen, who's a VP at Fox Searchlight Pictures in California, who has a relationship with Stacey Peralta, who's the director of Dogtown and Z-Boys, uh, Riding Giants, and Crips and Bloods Made in America, who has kindly agreed to donate skateboards to the Uganda Skateboard Union, which is an organization quite close to my heart and they teach kids to skateboard in Uganda. <laughs> this is Dan Rodriguez, he's a musician I work with in Minneapolis. He takes the entries and turns them into songs. He shares them with kids as part of a project called Youth Fr Frontiers. When the Philippines flooded earlier this year, I'm quite big in the Philippines for some reason, and I don't know why, but um, I was literally reading tweets from teenagers uh, stuck on the roofs of their houses, and I was able to retweet emergency information from them so people could help them which was amazing for me, and the blog gave me that opportunity. This is an entry I wrote in 2007 called The Passenger, and it reads, you always made me feel bad for asking you for a lift. Now I pick up hitchhikers wherever I go. I take them right to their door, even the prostitutes. A year later, it received this comment. The even the prostitutes part makes me sad. I want to save the world, but I can't. I'm giving up the whole prostitution thing and going back to homelessness. I can't help anyone. I can't even take care of myself. I responded, you just managed to write a succinct paragraph of text and showed a genuine understanding of human suffering and emotion. This means you can read, write, and understand the people around you. You're far more able than many people in this world to take care of yourself. You just have to believe that. Go and ask someone for real help. I can try and make you feel better from behind this keyboard, but that's all I can do. You need real people on your side of the screen to help, and I swear by all that I hold holy and every single fire of my being, they're out there waiting for you to ask. If you want to save the world, Start with yourself, please. I sincerely beg you, hold on. A year later, whoever you are, thank you. You have no idea how much that reply meant to me all those months ago from an ex-prostitute on a way to saving the world. And then in September. <laughs> Hello again. I'm the one on a way to saving the world. I don't want to refer to myself as an ex-prostitute anymore. I'm in college now on my way to saving the world. I'm going to be a social worker and devote my life to helping others. I thought about an English major briefly because I love reading and writing and because I know firsthand, thanks to you, that words do have the power to change the world, and they have. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Be at peace. Shanti. 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 So, never before in human history have we been able to touch so many lives from so far away, and never before have we been able to change those lives for the better with the simplest of stories. Thank you.